Today we are going to unbox the solar panels, see what we're dealing with, and then try to get them up on the roof. Kind of my strategy is just to go for it and try to deal with the issues along the way. And sometimes you win, sometimes you lose. Most of the time you lose. These are two 200 watt um, new power monocrystalline, I believe, solar panels. I got these ones because of the dimensions to output. So 200 watts to probably 64 by 24. Um, I believe those are the dimensions. I'll have to look at maybe 64 by 22. Uh, but then also because they're rated for snow loads and high winds. So if I spend time in heavy rain, heavy snow, etc., these will be able to bear it. Uh, and then high winds, obviously driving is obviously a continuous, obviously. Obviously. A continuous um, exposure to wind and then also wherever you drive you're always going to go through one of those passes that is just incredibly windy and I would hate to have panels that would wear faster than others because they weren't rated for something like that but first mistake um, I genuinely thought that the panels would come with mounting hardware I don't know where that idea came in my head I just assumed maybe that was a central part of the solar panel but they did not come with any mounting hardware and it's too late in the day to go to a hardware store because everything's closed. So you have one sad Jeremiah ready to work on a beautiful day, energized and fed, that can't do work because I overlooked the fact that these panels don't have any mounting hardware, which means I have to figure out what to get. Uh, anyway. Daddy, chill. We're going to see, or I'm going to see if I can get this up on the roof um, in order to see what I'm dealing with as far as um, the location of where the solar wires are going to insert into the roof and then into where the uh, battery bank is behind me. I don't have the bolts I need to connect these to the 8020s, so I'm just putting them up there just to see where these wires will run to. Um, I've got my connectors, I've got my extra wires, and if I can figure it out, I'll wire everything but leave it disconnected from the panels, put the panels back in until I have the bolts, and then put it all together. Paint your perfect world. So as you saw, I, uh, I poked through from the inside of the van with this screwdriver in order to make sure I was working with the right gland. Okay, all right, so we the basic idea was clean the surface, remove the, the cap um, that is in the back of the Ford Transit. There's a bunch of them all over and I just chose to use the one in the back right because the panels are mounted in the rear of the van. Um, you uh, p figure out where you want to position your valve. Yeah, I think that's what it's called, like a roof valve, uh, which is just simply two entry ports for the cables to come into the van in a sealable manner. Um, so I ran the cables through, put a bunch of beauty all tape on the edges, uh, screwed that down so that it was as tight as it can be and flat and making sure there was no gaps and then put through the roof sealant uh, for basically for use on roofs with leaks or places where water might come through put that all around all around the screw heads all around the edges making sure that it was just just like the fan where uh, from the surface of the van the roof of the van to the plastic that is unbro um, unbroken uh, that there's enough sealant to just cover all of that uh, the next step will just be to go inside and order up 20 foot long uh, solar cables instead of the um, instead of the 10 foot long ones that I have and then run those through the the valves that I didn't entirely seal and then once I'm satisfied with where they are once the solar panels are attached once everything's set up there and it shouldn't move I'll seal around the entrance port for the cables as well uh, which basically means I'm stuck with those so if they short I'm gonna have to redo the whole thing but that won't happen at all I hope but other than that, we're almost to solar. And then it's just about putting together the battery bank uh, and the distribution of power. Um, and then I can start hooking up lights and the refrigerator. That's pretty much all you need in life, right? Anyway, let's go see if we can go find a 20 foot cable. Fast forward a couple of weeks and I'm finally finishing up this part of the video. Just ignore 
everything going on in the back that hasn't happened yet uh, in your world because it's happened in my world already. Um, for the solar panels, I wound up getting the 20 foot cable. I got some, uh, I'll put the link in the description, I don't remember the name of it, but 20 foot instead of 10 foot and it comes out right where I need it in my battery bank with a little bit of extra which is always great because you never know if, uh, if I make a wrong connection or something I might need a couple of extra feet of wire. I didn't actually film the process of putting the panels up on top of the roof with the connections in place because I did it at night by myself in a little bit of like a frenzy. I just wanted to get it over with because I was traveling around with the panels just sitting in my van, taking up a ton of room. Uh, so I put them up. It was extremely difficult to do alone. I highly, highly recommend doing the entire fitting process on the 80-20 rails if that's how you're mounting your solar panels uh, with at least one other person, possibly even more. So I put half of it up on the roof, then assembled the rest of it on top of the roof. And it was a ton of little tiny movements and sliding. I had to balance it on my head at some point. I wouldn't recommend doing it alone. Long story short, find somebody else to help you do these connections. 8020 connectors typically work pretty well. The way these panels and my connectors uh, were working was that there was still a gap of space that allowed the panel to jiggle. So I inserted uh, a washer or two between the screw, the panel, and then the 8020 connector in order to bolster that space in order for it to be able to shake less. I then, out of paranoia of these things coming off with the road jiggling and flying off, um, I reached under and I sprayed, or not sprayed, I squirted a little bit of silicone uh, on each screw head so that it won't vibrate loose. It'll just vibrate within its one place. It won't actually vibrate and slowly unturn itself because the silicone is adhered to the panel and the screw. I did that for as many as I could reach, but it's a very tight space and a tedious process. But now I've driven, I think, probably 6,000 miles since I put them on, or 5,000, and they have not come off. In fact, they haven't moved since I put them on, so I'm very happy. All in all, I am super excited to build my electrical system now and then hook the solar panels up to start drawing power from the sun because that is just rad totally rad. Yeah. Until next time.